Father, in the name of Jesus, I seal this prayer. I seal this word in the blood of the Lamb. And I declare and I decree that no weapon formed against us can prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do with this word. We thank you, Father. We glorify you and you alone because we are nothing without you. I seal this prayer. I seal this word with the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb seal us completely, discontaminate us completely from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. In in the name of Jesus, I glorify you, Lord, and you alone, and you are the only one who takes all the glory. Put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of peace, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, anointed with the oil of your Holy Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, and the belt of truth. Give us a sword that will cut every assignment of hell upon our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, Claim your sword. Claim your sword. Tell the Holy Spirit to give you a sharpened sword through your lips and allow him be a vessel so he can come in and do whatever needs to be done in your life in the name of Jesus. And the glory of God is a shield of protection upon our lives. Zachariah 2.5. Zachariah 2.5 upon our lives in the name of Jesus. The word today comes from the book of Luke and it's coming from Luke 19. Through the 30, 31, 19 to 31. And it's, it's a very powerful teaching. It's, um, it's, it's about the parable of the rich men and Lazarus. This is about the parable of the rich men and Lazarus. And this is powerful. Um, the Lord has put this scripture in my heart for, for almost a week now. And I'll be reading it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and it's just amazing what, what the Lord uh, says here. And we need to keep that very dear, close to our hearts. And it says, Jesus continued. I'm going to go into the word. Jesus continued. There once was a rich man who had the finest things imaginable. This rich man had everything that you can imagine. Everything. Living every day enjoying his life of opulent luxury. So he was enjoying life. He was living his life with a lot of luxury. So he was having a good time. Outside the gate of his mansion, outside the gate of his mansion was a poor beggar named Lazarus. <laughs> It was a poor beggar named Lazarus. He lay there every day covered with boils and all the neighborhood dogs will come in and lick his open sores. So definitely this man's body was sick. The other man was a rich man. And we have a comparison of the two characters that they're speaking here about. The other man was a rich man and he was living enjoying and living his life was opulent luxury. So you see uh, in this, this character, he was having a good time. He was having a very good life. He was living a, 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 a wonderful, amazing life because he had the finances. He had, you know, uh, the, the, the wealth in order for him to do this. And then we have the beggar. The beggar was poor. He was full of sores. You know, and he was depending on, on, on whatever people will give him. Now, when we have these two characters, we also need to see what is inside those hearts. So the way, the way uh, um, I could see through what the Lord has been showing me is as one house was full of riches, visual to the man's eye. One house, because this temple is a house. One house was full of riches, according to the man's eye, according to the world, to the world. The other house was sick, and he was begging for food. But that, that is according to the man's eye too, as to what we see. So I'm going to keep on reading. And it says, The only food that he had to eat was the garbage 
that the rich man threw away. So he was depending on this rich man to be able to live, to be able to sustain his body. One day, poor Lazarus died, and the angels of God came and escorted his spirit into paradise. And this really touched my heart. Because many times, because our eyes are used to judge, we judge people from what they look in the outside without even thinking for a minute or asking the Holy Spirit to truly lead us to see what is inside those hearts. So many times we, we say, oh, this person is this, this person is that, this person has this, this person has that, da, 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 da. And we start talking and judging and assuming things because of our eyes. It's something that is visual to the eyes. But the Lord doesn't want us to do that. Because on the same way that we're going to be judging others, we're going to be judged. And that's what the Lord, the Word says. So we need to make sure that we are not judging. Like there is a saying, say, don't judge, don't judge the book by its cover. This poor man was full of sores in his body. He was sick in his body. But his heart, his heart was very pure. They have no agendas in the heart. His heart was fully of Jesus, full of Jesus. His heart was Jesus' heart. And even though he looked in the outside like that, in the inside there is purity. There is justice, there is righteousness. We have to be careful to what we see. We have to be careful what we hear because we can get easily contaminated by others. And the devil is not playing at this point in time. We are reaching times that we have to be very selective in what comes through our ears and what comes through our eyes. We have to be very selective because there is a lot of deception and the devil is really trying very hard to destroy our lives and to bring contamination into our lives. Very selective. Be aligned totally with the word of God. Be aligned with his kingdom. Be aligned with your purpose. Be aligned to him and with him and him alone. And do not apart your eyes from him. Seek him. It doesn't matter what is around you. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter if you're full of sores. Your heart cannot be contaminated. We have to have a pure heart. A God heart of gold. Because the devil is not playing. And anything that we do is coming back to us. Every seed we plant onto this earth and into this world, we will reap what we plant. So we need to be very careful. And it says, the day came that the rich man also died. In hell, he looked up from his torment and saw Abraham in the distance and Lazarus the beggar was standing beside him in the glory. Now, you may say, how a beggar is going to be in the glory of God in heaven? Because of the purity of his heart. You see, the beggar was sick in the body and you can see the sickness in the outside. But his heart was beautiful. He was pure for the Lord. The rich man, you can see the riches in the outside of him. But his heart was contaminated. And he was sick in the heart. Be very careful. So the rich, the rich man shouted, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water. And come to cool my tongue. For I am in agony in these flames of fire. Because that's hell. There is only two places that the man will go when he dies. One is heaven and the other one is hell. There is no purgatory. And if our heart is contaminated. Even if we have received Jesus in our heart. We can lose our salvation. We have to be very careful not to play with our salvation, not to play with our testimony, not to play 
church and play Jesus. Because the devil is not playing with us. We can lose our salvation and end up in hell. And screaming for help. And being that boiling fire for the rest of our lives. This piece over here is the earth. This is a time that we have spent on earth. The rest is eternity. And that will last forever and ever and ever. If we lose our salvation, we ended up in hell as the rich man. His riches couldn't heal his heart. Everything that he had, his possession couldn't heal his heart. Because the only one that can come and heal us completely is Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. There is nothing. There is no possession. There is no money. There is no drugs. There is no drinking. There is no family. There is no children. There is nothing. They can fill us completely. But Jesus Christ. There is nothing that can heal us completely. But Jesus Christ. There is nothing that can transform us from the inside out. Taking away every pain. Every spirit of rejection. Every loss. Every destruction. But Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I ask you that you pray this prayer with me. Say Lord Jesus today I surrender my life completely to you. I surrender my family. I surrender all oh Lord. Forgive me for every sin that I have committed. Sins of omission and commission. Sins that I have done with my body language. With my attitude. With my actions. With my words. Lord, I repent from the bottom of my heart. Repent from the bottom of your heart. I break every covenant that I have made with the devil, with my flesh, with the world, with my words. I make a new covenant with Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Climb out to him. He will heal you. He will change you. He will transform you from the inside out. And you will never be able to be the same again. Your misery will be over. Your pain will be over. All of it, he will take it away. Tell him, I'm making a new covenant with you today. I surrender completely to you. Open up my heart. Come inside my heart and live in my heart, Lord. I know that you died in the cross for me. And on the third day you came back to life. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for my life. I surrender my life into your arms, Lord. Come heal me, Lord. I make a new covenant as you are my Lord and my Savior. The day that I die, when I open up my arms, my eyes, I will be in your arms. Hell will not touch you. We don't have no time. We need to come to repentance. And surrender and receive him in our hearts. It's only through him and with him that we have access to the Father. There is no other way to salvation. And I'm going to get back into the water. And he says, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and come to cool my tongue. For I am in agony in these flames of fire. Because he was in hell. Because his heart is totally corrupted. His heart is totally in pain. His heart is totally sick. But Abraham responded, my friend, don't you remember? Why are you were alive? You had all you desire, surrounded in luxury. Why are Lazarus have nothing? Lazarus is in the comfort of paradise. And you are in agony. Besides. Between us is a huge chance that cannot be breached, keeping anyone from crossing from one realm to the other, even if they want to. So the rich man said, Then let me ask you, Father Abraham, to please send Lazarus to my relative. Tell him to witness to my five brothers and warn them not to end up where I am in this place of torment. 
The Lord is speaking to many today. To many. If we are not getting serious into Jesus Christ and salvation, and we come with repentance in our hearts, and we repent from our wicked ways, we will end up losing salvation. And there is no time to lose here. Because there is a lot of things going on in this world. And when we have open doors to hell, the devil will come and try to destroy us completely. Abraham replied, you have already had enough warning. They have the teachings of Moses and the prophets. And they must obey them. We have the scriptures. The Lord is giving us more than enough warnings of what's going on up there. And there are many people playing church, sitting in a bench in a church and getting out of church and going back into hell. There is no time to lose. Salvation is once. We can lose our salvation. Come and repent and come back to Jesus Christ. But what if they are not listening? The rich man added, if someone from the dead were to go and warn them, they will surely repent. Abraham said to him, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will be they believe even if someone was raised from the dead. If you have a spirit of unbelief in your life, you are dealing with an entity that comes from the pit of hell to destroy you. And you better repent, renounce to that spirit, and come back to Jesus Christ. The only way to salvation, the only door to salvation is through Jesus Christ. We cannot be playing church anymore. The only person that we are hurting is us. We have to repent. We have to let it go of unforgiveness. We have to let it all go of resentment. We have to let it go of everything that we carry in our life. We have to let it go. We have to let it go. These are times that we have to repent. We have to come to the feet of the cross and ask him for repentance. And he will give us his grace for this to happen. So we can be set free in him and him alone. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single one of them at the sound of my voice. And I ask you, Lord, that you just contaminate them, that you bring truth into their life. Holy Spirit, let the spirit of truth fall upon every single one at the sound of my voice. And touch them with your truth. Reveal the truth upon their hearts. Reveal the truth upon their hearts in the name of Jesus. Bring change into their life that they will walk in the righteousness of God. They will walk in total obedience, in total alignment to his word, to his kingdom, and to him alone. In Jesus' name I pray. I glorify him and him alone because he's the only one that takes all the glory. I seal this prayer. I seal this channel. I seal this word with the blood of the Lamb. And I declare they will not be touched. That when you listen to this, it will penetrate in the depths of your heart. And it will take possession of your heart. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I seal you in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name we pray. Have a great weekend. God bless you. See you Monday. Bye-bye.